Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired. The story we are about to bring you concerns one of those freak happenings that any fiction writer would consider beyond the pale of credibility. But this weird chapter of the silent service actually occurred. So let's get on with the story. We call it the Five Ring Circus. It was late in 1943. The USS Gato was at Brisbane in Eastern Australia. Morning, Captain. Morning, Ray. Yes, sir. Didn't know you went for horticulture, Captain. This was presented to me by a friend. What could I do? Give the wardroom a nice homey touch. Captain? Beg pardon, sir. Well? You gonna throw that shamrock overboard? Shamrock? Bad luck to get rid of them, sir. Sure? You're telling that to a man named Foley? That you're in charge. Guard it with your life. Every time we service, bring it up for air. Yes, sir. I'll take real good care of it. Now, don't go getting the idea I'm superstitious. No, sir. Still, there's no sense asking for trouble. Or we're starting out on a war patrol. In December 1943, the USS Gato took up a patrol station on the Rabaul Palau route in search of enemy convoys with a high priority on oil tankers. This was the Gato's 7th War Patrol. She was commanded by Lieutenant Commander Robert J. Foley of Washington, D.C., an excellent officer noted for his unorthodox tactics and a wry sense of humor. The executive officer, Lieutenant McGiven, hailing from Kenosha, Wisconsin, was studying Japanese, an avocation that was to prove invaluable before the end of this patrol. In addition to Lieutenant Ray Swanbeck of Sandusky, Ohio, and the other officers, the crew included the quartermaster, Milas, of San Diego, California, better known as Ski. These were the key members of the crew who struggled to save the Gato during the action that became known as the Five Ring Circus. Convoy, five ships, two escorts, one tanker with four goalposts. Must be at least a 10,000 tonner. Clear the bridge! Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! Hatch secure! Sixty feet! Sixty feet! Up scope! Here they come, fat, dumb, and happy. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Mark. 1,700 yards. All torpedo tubes ready. Now the tanker's zigging. Shift targets. Uh, let's take them as they come. Fire!
main induction valve is off its seat. Tell them to shove it back on or they'll get their feet wet. He's pinging directly on us. Right full rudder, all ahead full. Right full rudder, all ahead full. He's starting another run. Yeah, we're in for a good pounding. Passing right overhead. Pulling away. Both of them are. They never lost contact. Wonder what's going on up there. Take her up to periscope depth. Sixty feet. Up scope. Down scope. It's a float plane. That's why they pulled off. That plane will keep us down until the convoy's out of range. I want that tanker. Well, we could take a crack at her with a deck gun. No, oh, but you can't fight a plane with a sub. We could try anyway. Stations for gun action. Stations for gun action. Stations for gun action. Surface! <laughs> Captain Foley's decision to surface and fight a running battle with a plane was unorthodox and later caused many old submarinists to shake their heads silently. But Captain Foley knew if he didn't surface, he had no chance of overhauling the target, and he wanted that tanker. What are you doing with that? Your orders, sir. Bring the shamrock off the air whenever we surface. Get it below. Yes, sir. That was good coffee, Wall. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> I thought I'd see a submarine take on a plane, on purpose. You gotta know when to take chances. The old man's got a flair for it. That's kind of jolting. Nah, it's like those Texas football teams. The other guys never know what's coming next. When they figure it out, it's too late. Yeah, but I've seen them do a lot of fumbling, too. It's a load on you holding him back. I try. But the skipper will get that tanker if he has to chase it right into Tokyo Bay, no matter what. Mr. McGibbon, the captain would like to see on the bridge. Right, 10 degrees rudder. Side of the convoy yet, Captain? No, not yet. Take a look, Mac. What do you make of it? Looks like a man. Seems to be in bad shape. Well, we better get him aboard. Rescue party.
your chance to practice up on your Japanese. Oh, mahi wa dale da. Tono kai nanga to tanoka. Toko kara ki tanoka. Watashi wa dai nippon teikoku gunjin desu. Koko 2 shoukan bakari kyori o shiteorimasu. What's he say? I think he's a Japanese soldier, Captain. The best I can make out, he thinks he's been adrift two weeks. Watashi wa minna zenin yukui fumi narimashite. Watashi wa tonatte mo kamanai desu. Talks too fast. I can only get a few words. Take him below. See what you can do for him. What's that? Look like a dead seagull. No, sir. Just part of one. Well, that's all he had on him. Japanese invasion money. His paybook. Mr. McGivern, if you get a chance, ask him who the girl is. It's his wife or his girlfriend. It might be his sister. What do you care? Well, we chased that tanker to Tokyo. He's going to look her up. That's right. <laughs> what have you done for him? Well, I gave him a shower, put some goop on those salt water sores, and Wallace feeding him now. Battle station. The Gato again made contact with the convoy on the morning of December the 20th, 1943. Captain Foley immediately started an end run and submerged on the estimated track of the target. Every effort was made to reach a position for a close shot at the tank. And at 4 p.m., she commenced firing with about two. in the forward trim line. How bad? It'll fill a bucket in a half an hour. So empty the bucket every 30 minutes. Take her down to 300 feet. What's that? Sounds like the after gun mount carried away. Oh, no, it's on the bridge deck. It's still rolling around up there. Must be something cylindrical. Yeah, like a loose oil drum. Mac? Yes, sir. What would a loose oil drum be doing on deck? Can't be. You don't think it's an unexploded depth charge? If it is, we'll set it off if we go any deeper. Level off! Don't let it go any deeper! But we don't know it's that. We don't know it isn't. Another depth charge like that last one, and things could get real interesting. Mac, you wouldn't recommend deep submergence, would you? Well, no. Not if that thing is a depth charge. It'll blow us right in half. None of the men aboard the Gato could be sure that the thing on their deck was a depth charge that had failed to explode. Captain Foley had to assume that it was. In that event, they could not go deeper without taking a chance of reaching a depth at which it had been set to explode. At its present level, the Gato is taking a dangerously severe pounding. What are we going to do with that thing? I don't know. That's what the old man gets paid for. We gotta come up with an answer fast. Any ideas? I don't know. We can't sit here. They really gotta spot it. Follow every turn we make. Is any standard technique for this problem? I never heard of it. Of course, we're only guessing. We can't be sure it's a depth charge. Seems to me there are only two ways of finding out. Go deeper and pray, or go up and have a look at it. I'd rather see it than hear it. And they're sitting up there waiting for us. Well? Captain. Sound gear's picked up a heavy rain squall. Where? Bearing, zero, three, zero. Right, 10 degrees rudder. Right, 10 degrees rudder. Prepare to surface. What the break? Sector report. 
reports. The biggest one you ever saw. Well, it won't go off unless it rolls over the side. Those guys land a lucky shot. We got to get rid of that thing. Any bright ideas? I don't know. I just don't know. We'll go back and take a look at it. I don't want to haul it back to Australia. All right, right sir. Mark, you think you can read the markings on it? I'm not so good at those Japanese characters. How about that character you fished out of the water? Get him up here, quick. Aye, sir. Reload all forward torpedo tubes. That tanker's still around here somewhere. This was the five-ring circus of the USS Gato. Under cover of the rain squall, they were attempting to outrun two fast escort vessels. Captain Foley was continuing the search for the tanker a prize he was determined to have. In the forward torpedo compartment, the crew was working frantically to reload the torpedo tubes. Lieutenant McGiven was trying to get an accurate translation of the Japanese nameplate data. This information was needed for intelligence and for the value it might have in trying to dispose of the depth charge. And in the center ring of the circus, Lieutenant Swanbeck wrestled with the key problem. What to do with that deadly cargo? And to top everything, they were under fire. What's the matter down there? Give us all the speed you got. Hona hoka nani ka? Haya ku hana tuna. Kinsu nijiru sumandro. Claiming to hoke for two meter niki bakasu. What's he say? 600 pounders. Set to go off at 250 feet. What's that for we had to be gave it a ride? A little over 200 feet. 600 pounds. What the skipper say? He said figure out how to get rid of it. That's all? Just get rid of it. Safely, he meant. And he said to be quick about it. So figure out something, anything. Any idea how you disarm those things? Well, I've never been this close to one before. The machine is made by know. Never mind. I don't want anybody fooling around that thing with a pipe wrench. Come on, Steve, think. I'm thinking. Look, we can't keep it and we can't get rid of it. Maybe we'll just have to run away from it. Look at the bandit ship. Well, what else can we do? As soon as this squall clears, that, that chaser will blast us. Captain Foley won't go. Look, we can't submerge her. This whole ship has had it. The skipper will never take the life raft. Open the forward torpedo room hatch.
Just there in the good luck camera, sir. Sorry, Captain, you got the wrong one. Right, real pretty. Yeah, if we're real lucky, it'll sink right under that escort vessel. I got a time for it. That baby's gonna float right back into their laps. You just watch. Why not? It could happen. Oh, you need some shore duty. I tell you, it's gonna lift that sub chaser right out of the water. It'll be the blindest kind of luck. Okay, so we're lucky. But when that thing goes off, duck! Because the air is going to be full of honorable ancestors. Really, <laughs> Dak? Sorry to pull you away from your grandstand seats, but we're going to be out of this squall in a minute. Well, don't worry about that sub chaser, Captain. In just about two minutes, she's going to get a hot foot. Nice work, anyway. Nobody's got any faith. We got her. I swear it got her. Personally, I don't see a thing. I go along with Ski. I think we got her. Well, good thing. Good thing. The sinker? There's no visibility back there. You don't see it, do you, Captain? No sign of her at all. I'll go along with you there, Captain. Yes, sir. A mighty good luck charm. All right. Now let's go get that tanker. The records of the Cato do not list the escort vessel as sunk. It would have been the rarest kind of Irish luck. But in the minds of Ski and other members of the crew, no doubt exists. They had faith. The records do list, however, the sinking of a 10,000-ton Jap tanker. She went down quite a few miles this side of Tokyo Bay. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. You have just seen the story of the Gato 7th War Patrol. Now I want to introduce a commanding officer, Captain Robert J. Foley. Nice to see you again, Bob. For a while there, I wasn't sure I was going to make it. What were you worried about? You knew the end of the story. Yes, but when it really happened, there were so many things going on, I didn't have time to be scared. Are you all right now? Well, I could use a cup of coffee. I'm sorry Wall isn't here. I wish my whole crew could be here. Bob, I'd like to ask you one question before you go. All right, shoot. Do you think you actually sank that escort vessel with her own depth charge? Well, you saw the picture, Tommy. How do you feel about good luck, Shamrock? <laughs> Be with us again when we bring you another true and exciting submarine story. Take her down, and up goodbye, through the deep blue underneath the ocean. We'll control the ocean's wide. See you. 